Welcome to our Mini-Eye presentation on proactive root cause analysis. Can RCA be done on failures that haven't happened? My name is Bob Latino. I will be your host for the next few minutes, and I appreciate your time. Let's get started. When is RCA typically used? And for those of us listening who are in this uh, line of work in our facilities, we know that they're oftentimes commissioned after a major failure, someone is hurt, or God forbid, a fatality. We may have large insurance claims, or we may have something that has the possibility of going to court. Nonetheless, the common denominator of all of these is that they are uh, high visibility types of events and uh, the more sporadic or acute in nature. But how can RCA be used prospectively? Can we use RCA on things such as new equipment designs, capital projects, new process designs for our planning and scheduling purposes. Th think about it is that when uh, when we have a, for instance, if we have a compressor that keeps failing and we decide that as a capital project for uh, engineering, what we're going to do is redesign the compressor. Well, how can we design out the limitations of the old compressor if we don't really know what was causing it to fail in the first place? So that's one way we can use the RCA prospectively is to be able to, you know, be able to do an RCA on the old design, identify the root causes to it, and then incorporate that into a new design. Let me give you an example of uh, where we have used this to, to our benefit in, in teaching our uh, PROACT root cause analysis courses. You know, like any training organization, sometimes we're, we're hired and it's managerial therapy that uh, someone pays us and we go out and uh, especially when you know it's on a Saturday or something that the students really don't want to be there. And we can gauge from body language uh, and, and the physical actions with the students that when, when they really don't want to be there, they're going to let you know and they're going to know that this is never going to work. Uh, that management is just putting us in there, and uh, I often refer to these folks as the, the donut crowd. It's not their fault. It's that, the, you know, that they obviously think that the, this will never, their managements will never let them do this in their facility. So they, they just, uh, you know, notch it up to good to know training, and basically uh, we'll go back and everything will be the same. Well, under these type of situations, it doesn't really matter what we, uh, what tactic we take at this point, because you know these students have their mindset as to uh, what's going to happen when they get back, and it's really a waste of the time in their minds. So since we have nothing to lose, what we will do is pose an exercise to them where we want to use RCA to help them solve the problem that they foresee. The problem that they foresee is that the RCA effort will fail itself. Even though it hasn't happened yet, this is the way that they see it. And we all know from the, when we have been beat with the bat of paradigms uh, that if that's the way that we see it, whether reality or not, that's the way it shall be. Therefore, we will treat this situation as if it has occurred. So if looking at this strictly from a cause and effect standpoint is that now we're doing an exercise with a class utilizing the RCA approach we're trying to teach them and we're going to start as the undesirable outcome that we're going to analyze is going to be that our RCA effort has failed and the manners in which that effort could fail are either it's implemented but not successful or the training was never implemented. Again, now we continue through the methodology that we're teaching them, and we would say, how could the training have never been implemented? Well, it was either not viewed as useful, or they found it as useful, but they never thought that it would be implemented regardless, whether it was useful or not. And again, this is when they start to get involved a little bit, because now it, it is uh, touching a uh, sore spot with them, and they're more than happy to participate. How could this be useful and we still not do it? Well, either our training was inadequate, there was no time uh, given for us to do it, or we foresee that there's no management support to be able to do this. 
And the, the reiteration of the questioning goes on and on, and you drill down, and eventually they're going to come up with things like, uh, well, you know, my management isn't here. They don't know what we're learning. They're not giving me the time to do it. They're not giving me the resources to do it. Uh, there's really no expectation that when I leave this room that, uh, that I'm going to do it. Uh, oftentimes they believe that because their management hasn't been to the training to show that their support, that they think that they're learning how to do it faster when that often is not the case. They're learning how to do it right. And if they go back and they try to do it right, then their managements aren't going to be too happy with them. But either way, what they're doing, whether they know it or not, are engaging themselves in the cause and effect logic associated with the root cause analysis methodology to solve a problem that hasn't existed yet. Now what we can do as the trainers in this case, because you know, we can see the writing on the wall that they're never going to go back and do this or they do not have that expectation and say, you know, we did a little mini analysis with your class and this is why they believe it will never work. Now because we're in a classroom environment and we don't have any uh, uh, evidence that's been collected, we have a lot of hearsay, you know, we tell them that and say, you know, we don't know whether this is real or perceived but in their minds, it is real. So therefore, when they go back, this is their reality and they will make decisions off of this being their reality. So uh, with that, we encourage the managements to say, you know, look at the, the causes that they have come up with. If they're real or not, uh, it should be expressed to them as to how to overcome these and whether they're a misnomer or not, and to give them evidence to show that you do have a set expectation for uh, what you want them to accomplish and how to be successful. In conclusion, RCA is a thought process that seeks to uncover not only what has gone wrong, but also what can go wrong. We're just changing the mentality that if we have a high risk event, for instance, if it comes from a failure modes and effects analysis, we are going to treat that high risk event as if it has materialized and we are going to start off our logic tree with that undesirable outcome. And then we will use the same mechanism to hypothesize backwards as to how could that event have occurred. We're going to continue that questioning and we're going to uncover all the possibilities that could line up in order for that undesirable outcome to materialize. Once we know these types of causes, then we can implement recommendations to ensure that systems are put in place so that they can't happen. This will give a greater chance of success when we go ahead and implement uh, a new process, a new system, or a, a new piece of equipment, whatever the case may be, so that we have a greater confidence that we have thought through all of the things which could pose a, uh, a hurdle to the success of the implementation. Again, I thank you for your time. Uh, I do appreciate it, as I know you have many other things that compete for your time. Uh, here is our contact information if you have any questions. Uh, I, again, I encourage you to visit our website at www.reliability.com. It has been completely overhauled and provides a wealth of information for you that you can use to make your reliability efforts that much more successful. Thank you and good luck.